Women in Surveying Sisterhood Summit. My name is Marian Ellis. Today we're going to be talking about presenting your best self, in short, fashion, with Sophie Smith and Helen Reynolds, who's a stylist. Now what you wear can really make a big difference to your confidence, to the way that you feel about yourself, and ultimately to how empowered you feel when you walk into that meeting or boardroom or when you walk out onto site. You may be wearing all the PPE, but it's what's underneath that actually determines how you feel. So it was great to talk to these two and to get not necessarily fashion tips, but to talk about why that kind of thing makes a difference. Because, you know, if we need to fake it till we make it, then what we wear seems like a really easy start. Enjoy this conversation. I'm sure it will split opinion but we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks. So, welcome. Um, I'm delighted to have both Helen and Sophie join us today and also feeling a little bit intimidated because we're talking about fashion. I've got my nice necklace on and feeling really, uh, trying to feel positive. Um, but it's quite an unusual subject to talk about fashion within the world of surveying. I don't think I've come across a an interview or article about it. So really looking forward to talk today. So firstly, uh, perhaps if I can introduce Helen, uh, Helen Reynolds, do you want to just give us a brief overview of what you do? Because you're not a surveyor and you're probably thinking, <laughs> what? <laughs> I know nothing about surveying, um, but thank you for having me anyway. Uh, so I'm Helen Reynolds and I work with women to help them to develop their own unique personal style so that they always look good, but much more importantly than that, so that they always feel confident and appropriate to the situation. Great. And if I can introduce the award winning Sophie Smith. <laughs> Hi, Sophie. Hi, everyone. Yes, I have recently won an award, which is the Best Woman Building Surveyor at the European Women in Construction and Engineering Awards, which is very exciting. Um, I have worked in this industry for 10 years and I started as an apprentice at 18 years old in uh, building control, progressed into contract management. I finally reached my dream of becoming a building surveyor a couple of years ago, and I now work for Action Global. Um, it's a really big network, and I'm really enjoying it. Fantastic. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about fashion and what, uh, what women wear. And I was really interested to hear um, your story, Sophie, about the PPE shoes that you designed and got involved with. Um, my experience, uh, this resonated with me because my experience, um, I'm a residential surveyor, so years ago I used to go out and inspect um, houses, um, you know, for valuation and mortgage and, and survey. And I, uh, it's a very practical job, you know, in and out of the car six times a day, you never know what kind of property you're going to get, going to get into. And when I started the job, I remember wearing quite nice clothes. And then, a, you know, a couple of months in, I was very, very practical, dowdy clothes. And I remember waking up one day, sort of a couple of years in, and thinking, and it was a hot day as well, thinking, right, I'm going to wear something different tomorrow. It's Saturday, I'm going to go shopping. And that day, I went into a property, I used to work in Croydon, and uh, it was a, a large Indian family that lived there, and they didn't speak English, and that was quite common, that was fine. Uh, but I went out the back of the property to, to inspect the back elevation and they didn't tell me they had two Jack Russells. So as I walked <laughs> out, these two yappy things came out and um, tried to bite my leg. Now, luckily they didn't bite me uh, because I was wearing a pair of old kickers. I don't know if you remember kicker shoes, the sort of big black, yeah. they were trendy when I was in school. Um, Kickers and I had these like wide leg or felt like wide leg black trousers and I remember standing there with my leg in the air and these sort of two dogs hanging off the end of it thinking yeah I, I'm going to stick with what I'm wearing <laughs> you know and it was family very apologetic it was like it was fine one of those misunderstandings it was okay but even then it brought to me actually the importance of wearing something really practical so um and I didn't feel sort of very empowered. Sometimes I'd go to the properties and I'd be called, you know, uh, are you the gas man? Because I had a tool bag. Um, I was once asked, am I the midwife? 
I'm not quite in <laughs> sure what they were expecting me to do with the tool bag. Um, so, but that holds, I didn't feel very good about what I, what I wore and obviously my job changed and, 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 and things. Um, but Sophie, tell me a little bit about these shoes that, that, that you worked on and how that came uh, Yeah, I can really relate to everything you're saying. Um, it's really challenging as a surveyor uh, because we are everywhere. We're in the office, in a professional environment followed by maybe someone's property and you don't want to be too intimidating and professional. They might be in quite you know, pajamas or something. I've had everything when I've been in houses before um, to being on a building site and needing to be practically and safely. Um, so it, but that's one of the best things about the job as well. Um, the best thing about being a building today is that you can be doing all sorts of things every day. You wake up in the morning and you'll be doing something different. So it's getting that balance. When I started in the career, um, you know, I was a girl and I was, it was quite unusual. I was the only girl in a team of 14 building control surveyors. And, um, I, you know what, I didn't actually feel like I didn't fit in with the guys. They were so welcoming. But the physical aspects, I really didn't feel like I fitted in. They took me to the local PPE store as a, a standard induction procedure. Um, what the, the men in the shop were all already a bit like, who is this girl in our shop? Plus, I was really young as well, so it didn't help. I wasn't that professional, more experienced looking person, um, male or female. Um, and they didn't have anything for me to wear. Um, they didn't have the shoes for me. Um, what the guys used to wear was um, some brogues that were steel sole and toe caps. So they met the safety features for our insurance cover and our requirements on site. Um, but we, we are not doing a, a role that involved a trade or anything. We were merely inspecting and looking at technical aspects. Um, so I didn't have anything to wear and, and that really, really stuck with me and I felt like that could make women leave the industry if you don't feel like you fit in it and it genuinely was the physical aspect for me um, and, and that started with the shoe. Uh, so I was blogging about it, um, I wrote a local column in the paper um, and um, just kept pushing around these kind of uncomfortable subjects and I was really lucky to work with a company called Ambulance Safety um, and they said, we want to let's work together. I, I felt really lucky because most sales roles, um, they're looking for um, a market. And the market for women um, may be considered to be quite small, um, but they took a risk. And I've got a two with me. Um, and, and it's just one of their Europe best sellers. So let's bring it here. This is the Sophie shoe. Um, so it doesn't look like a safety shoe, and that was part of it. The guys are wearing brogues on site. Um, we're not defined by our PPE. It has the, the safety features. It's got a steel sole, toe cap, and it's oil resistant and slip resistant. So it's super safe, and it fits me, thank God, and it's very comfortable. And I feel like I fit in, and I feel very welcome now to the industry. Um, and that later progressed to um, when I joined Atkins. We did a lot of nuclear work, oh, well we do do a lot of nuclear work, and um, quite major construction sites that I wasn't used to. And actually we needed ankle protection as well, so I couldn't always wear my Sophie shoe. Um, so I brought out the Lydia boot, um, and it's got a nice slip here, which is great, because I think everyone will agree with me um, in our, our surveying roles, that we tend to get to the site, put our boots on, do our job, come back and take our boots off. And these are really good on a cold day when your hands are literally freezing. Um, but the other thing is they're really comfortable. And again, they're made for women, so they fit us much better. Um, it's great when I talk about my story because I think most women in the industry relate. That either they haven't had anything to wear, they've been too big, they haven't had anything in their size, and they're really uncomfortable, which to me is the opposite of health and safety. Um, so hopefully in a nutshell, that explains my, my shoe story. Um, and I didn't realise it was going to be a reality, and, and that's the joy of kind of doing small steps that lead to big things, and, and hopefully make people feel more welcome and fit in. Do you know that's so so important? Um, when I worked out, I was when I was a graduate, I worked out on a building site, and um, I was sort of given, you know, given the PPE, I had these sort of boots. I actually, uh, I think I might have them in the loft still, actually. There were some silk, <laughs> like, you know, they're typical sort of beige ankle boots. And I used to wear two pairs of socks with them. For me, the really disempowering thing was the high-vis coat and jacket that we used to wear. 
because that was literally about four sizes too big at least and I had to as a graduate I was meant to be the assistant site manager and I would walk out <laughs> like some sort of comedy dress up child and I was in my you know my sort of mid to early 20s and it was really disempowering and again you know I worked with a really great team really great bunch on site but I was treated like you know the one they had to look after you know I remember sort of saying comments like I mean we'll we'll do the scaffolding because we don't we don't we don't want to get hurt you know these sort of older guys and they were just like well they were doing it in a caring way but I was coming across as almost as like a vulnerable character if you like um I also recall I didn't help myself at that time because it was hot I used to have sort of longer hair the hard hats never fit and I got into wearing pigtails <laughs> Not, <laughs> didn't help myself at all <laughs> on that on that front and I've always had my hair sort of bobbed <laughs> ish ever, ever since <laughs> Um, but perhaps Helen, could you maybe talk to us a bit about actually what you wear and how that can empower you? Absolutely, and it was so interesting listening to Sophie actually. And when I when I talk to people about what I do, it, see, it, on, on the surface, it sounds like or feels like it's to do with how you look, and that a woman might choose to do something about her clothes and her style so that she looks nice. But Sophie kept using the word, I felt that, you know, I felt this and I felt that. And you just have as well, you felt disempowered. And actually what I am fascinated by in, in the work that I do is the massive impact of what we're wearing, how it makes us feel. And of course, the way we feel affects how we behave. And the way we behave affects how people react to us. And actually, in the first instance, the way people react to us is based on our, the first impression or, or how we look. So it's, it's like a cycle of, you know, how you think you feel, how that makes you behave, how that makes other people react to you. And then, you know, the fact that the very first impression they get of you is how you look. And that's how they're going to base who you are. That's how they're going to react to you. Um, so if you're feeling disempowered because you're wearing a ridiculous oversized high-vis jacket and you've got your pigtails in, um, you don't feel great. They're looking at you and feeling like you look vulnerable and that they need to look after you. And it's, it's just not a helpful cycle. So just thinking of ways, you know, I, as I was sharing with you before we started, Marion, I've never worked in an all-male environment. Um, and, you know, my the, the corporate career that I was in for the longest was actually in women's magazines. And so the workforce was predominantly female. So I don't actually have experience of trying to feel empowered or, or, or fit in in a male environment but this this connection with how what we're wearing makes us feel therefore how we behave etc etc is so so important and so powerful and what Sophie's done with these shoes is just amazing just to have something that fits and that is comfortable mean and, and that's practical and up to the job means that you don't have to think about that anymore and you can actually fully engage in what you're there to do what your what your role is and and feel confident and then people react to you in a more positive way because you're behaving in a more confident way i i find it fascinating and it's so so important absolutely. yeah absolutely it does it does make a difference and i think i think also at any age you know at any age just sometimes as a you know i i talk about sort of through these series the life cycle of a surveyor because i've come across sort of lots of different ones and you typically see, you know, in your first sort of graduate or your first type role, you're trying to fit in. And as a, as a young person anyway, you're trying to experiment with what you wear and you want to be professional, but you want to be young and edgy <laughs> or not, as in my case. Um, you know, you're constantly sort of trying to, to fit in. But then also, you know, working with that male environment, sometimes you you know it's about you want to fit in not stand out i actually remember doing my um apc interview to get chartered down at heathrow and i remember i uh, i'd bought a black suit um and underneath i had um a light totally not my color uh, helen but a lime green or a bright lime green um uh, top underneath like a little knitted top and looked very sort of smart and in the APC, as those who know, you start uh, in this sort of room and then you have to get up and go and knock on the door. And while we were all sort of sat in this room, everybody was wearing black. Well, there was only a couple of women, um, but we were all wearing black, about 12 of us. 
and I took off my jacket and it was literally like everyone went, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> like day glow. And I'm thinking, oh my God, am I wearing the wrong thing? Um, you know, and then I had to, on the back of that, I then had to go and sort of do my, do my interview, which was the worst 50 minutes of my life, but the best as well, because <laughs> I got qualified. <laughs> but all I remember is wearing, was I wearing the right top? Because it was proper day glow <laughs> back then. Um, but what about um, um, sort of, you know, as you mature and as we sort of get older, um, one of the things that I found over time is that sometimes I have felt a bit frumpy with the clothes that I wear. Um, and whether it sort of suits my situation. So as I've then moved from on, out on site, um, I then um, went to work in an office. And I remember I first started to wear lots of suits. Um, then I had two pregnancies. So I had maternity um, uh, leave uh, and obviously the bump to cover. And actually in my first pregnancy, I remember feeling quite well dressed. Um, and then the second one, I just felt like a frump. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I seem to go from suits to wearing lots of twin sets um, um, and then it's sort of taken me a little while just to actually find my groove and, and, and things that I, that I like wearing um, but what about sort of as you mature how does that change the way the clothes that you wear Helen? Well it, it's again it's it's so interesting hearing someone else talk about it as, as you just have and how different that is it is for women as it is for men and you know for you guys who are working in these male environments you know imagine a man going to that interview you went to when you were very young and they would just put the black or the gray or the navy suit on and a white shirt probably and not think about it and do the interview and focus on doing a good job of the interview and then they get the job and then they age but probably their body stays pretty much the same because they wouldn't be having babies not that all women have babies but even regardless our figures change our bodies change our confidence levels change our role in life often changes as we age as well and of course fashion changes so okay a man might buy a new suit every I don't know every for my husband it's only every few years probably because he doesn't wear one very often maybe some men buy a couple of suits a year I don't know but again it's it's just what's in fashion the, the cut changes for a man slightly every few years as well but it's not that difficult and for a woman the fashion changes your body's changing you're aging the you know the world is harder on women aging than it is on men aging in terms of the um, confidence we feel or the criticism we feel we're getting what we're reading about and so it does it's bloody hard work and there's no wonder women can feel disempowered just around their clothes which when you say it out loud sounds absolutely ridiculous they're just things that cover our body um, but I every piece of advice that I give comes back to the same thing regardless of your age and regardless of your situation regardless of what you're doing and that is to really try to work out what your style is and what really works for you and what makes you feel amazing because if you dress for you first and, and, and wear colors and shapes and styles that fit you and flatter you and make you feel good, then it doesn't matter where you go that day, what you're doing, who you're meeting, you're gonna feel good. And what a lot of women do, and again, you, you've kind of highlighted this perfectly for me, Marion, is you went to an interview, so you put a black suit on. And okay, I love the fact you put green underneath it. I think that's brilliant. But a lot of women wouldn't have thought to have done that. They'd have just put the black suit on and maybe something else neutral underneath. And um, you're dressing for the occasion or the situation rather than dressing for you first. My advice is always to try and you know get to grips with who you are and what your style is, which I appreciate is a big ask. Um, but if you can do that, then you dress for yourself first and then you tweak that outfit for the situation or what you're doing that day so that you're still being you and you're still dressed and feeling like you. You're just making it more practical or smarter or more casual if that's what your style is. Um, and make it more appropriate appropriate for the situation and definitely as we age we we sometimes can feel like we've lost a little bit of ourselves over the years we've given it to our children or to our partner or to our parents who perhaps we're having to start thinking about and looking after a bit more as well and you can lose your identity I think personality wise anyway and then of course when it comes to then you've got to go and buy some new clothes because you've you know, you need new things or your body's changed, your size has changed or whatever. And it can be really difficult to know who you are. So it all come back, comes back to this spending some time on working out 
who you are clothes wise what really works for you um, i will share some tips with you later on but get to grips with you first and then dress for you and make it appropriate to the situation regardless of your age yeah i totally agree with you there and um I was so confused when I entered the industry. I basically looked at what the men looked like and tried to look like that. So it was basically a suit, a shirt, and with the exception of the tie, which is, didn't seem normal for women to wear ties. Um, and I did that for quite a long time. Um, the other challenge, I suppose, is being on site quite a lot. So style can go out the window, to be honest. <laughs> You've just got to be completely covered up. Um, and in a practical outfit that if you fall over or you're bending down to look into brickwork or in the foundations and that that, that you you're dressed appropriately so it, you can lose a bit of that style and confidence through that um but definitely as i progressed in my career and i actually started dressing more for me um i really felt so much more confident and i felt like i could be myself and then in the workplace i started to do me and have my own um kind of brand if you like and, and that was selling and it was doing really well and I was being promoted in that as opposed to trying to be something else and then I, I held myself back a bit. Um, the other problem that I have is I'm really tall um, so it's, it's actually quite good with the guys because I don't have, I don't feel small next to them generally um, but like I actually suit skirts and tights much better because trousers and never fit me they're either too short or too long so i'm not tall enough to be that long tall sally <laughs> friend um the trousers have always been really awkward for me um so that's been quite cool but the other thing i suppose is weight um i haven't embarked on having a family or anything yet but that might happen one day but i certainly have experienced getting older and um not obviously i'm not really old or anything like that by any means but um metabolism changes and um, yeah, put on weight, not massively, but I'm very comfortable with it now, but I didn't used to be. And then you start to, that can affect your confidence and it, like, like you're talking about confidence at work and how you feel. Um, and Marion touched upon all ages. And I think that's really important because um, we, we have a lack of diversity in the industry. And actually what you wear might, might be quite important um, if we're talking about these kind of things. There are a lot of transferable skills mm -hmm. of people out there who we need in construction and engineering, um, that perhaps if we're having these conversations, just normal women talking about what to wear, that they might actually feel that, oh, you don't have to be a man, you don't have to wear a suit, you can just be you, come as you, bring your strengths and strengths and weaknesses with a bit of training, might be able to do a fantastic job um, working in the industry. So it started to make me, this conversation has opened my eyes actually to how important what you wear is, or being comfortable with what you wear, and also, not worrying too much about it and actually wear what you feel comfortable in and what suits you um, is more important than feeling like you have to dress a certain way so yeah it's, it's quite interesting <laughs> for women we can be a different size at different points in the month even can't we depending on where we are in our <laughs> yeah. so you need your sort of your fat bloated day clothes and your thinner day clothes yeah. and yeah it's it's really hard there's no wonder we struggle with it um and you know again that men don't have these issues so they don't ever have to even think about it and also we have more choice don't we so again for the poor men it is just probably suits and shirts or more casual trousers and a shirt whether or not with a tie but for us we've got all these options and actually we can be blindsided and you go <clears throat> whether you're looking online or going into the shops and you're just like a lot of women they just don't know where to start and I think as, uh, as we mature as well, I mean, I found, you know, at times I've worn a uniform. Yeah. You know. Um, you mean your own uniform, like one that you self-imposed uniform? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, after my, my um, I think the, between my pregnancies, I pretty much wore, you know, a skirt and twin set with a belt. Mm -hmm. And I wore a variation of that for about, <laughs> for about six months. <laughs> um, you know so I think you do go through you go through different phases I think really key, key point that you sort of both mentioned is personality I think that's so so important um, that you know as we as we sort of move through our careers that we don't lose sight of ourselves and the number of more mature women that I've spoke to within the industry 
you know, when I've sort of mentioned about sort of fashion and, and these things, they're like, oh, you know, I don't need any of that, you know. Um, but I notice as an outsider looking in, sometimes they just disappear into the background. And I've spoken to, I spoke to a lady um, after a, a, an awards event that I went to, and she told the story of how um, her boss had said, they've got some event coming on, uh, coming up, they need some more women on stage. So she, could, could this lady please now be on the stage and facilitate one of these panels? And she had to point out to them that she'd been doing that for about 15 years and had he not noticed that she was a woman. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, he, he didn't, obviously nobody means any of these things. But equally, you know, she was um, quite a quiet woman. You know, I can't imagine her ever wearing a bright, glary colour. Um, and you just think, actually, have you, sometimes we, in our, you know, in our, we want to fit in so much, do we then start to disappear and lose that personality? And when you start to lose that bit of personality, you then start, your confidence goes and it sort of follows a little dotted pattern, doesn't it? A little, a little chain. So, um you know, and, and I know that there'll be, that'll, there'll be women sort of listening to this thinking, no, you should be there just to do the job, you know, and even some of the most masculine women, if I can, if I can say that, you know, I was talking to another lady recently who told me how, you know, she, she's a, she was a, a, a powerhouse of a woman. She gets stuff done, um, very highly respected. And yet she told me just how annoyed she was that she had to pay you know, I think it was over a hundred pounds a month to get her hair and roots done. And, you know, the extra half an hour a day she had in terms of getting ready and choosing her clothes and her male counterparts didn't have to, to do that. You know, so for all our, you know, um, trying to fit in and being one of the men and actually things are a bit different. And for me, actually, I just think, you know, enjoy what you wear. You know, you, get, you can get to a point where you enjoy it. Doesn't the day start better? When you, when you feel good about it, yeah. it's a bit like when you, I mean, I've got a bit of a kink in my hair today. It's going that way. Yeah, it was intended to do that. It was a bit annoying this morning. Um, you know, but when your day starts well, everything then goes well. It's like having a good hair day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And actually, we underestimate people, we shouldn't judge because actually some people who we might think are less feminine, that doesn't mean they don't spend as much effort on what they wear. Um, let's not exclude men as well. I think a lot of men might actually struggle as well. Some people have weight issues or health issues um, and watch people who are blending in. They might actually have an internal thing where they don't want to stand out um, and then you can start to delve into other issues um, around that. Why, why is it? What's going on? Um, I did work with a colleague once who had quite bad Crohn's. We didn't know about it and he lost so much weight so it's kind of the opposite to putting on weight and I'm sure he's experiencing these dilemmas that, that we're discussing where he says what do I wear I don't want people to know about this I um I don't want to stand out or how do I still look the way I want to look yet I've had other issues that have, have affected me externally um, and that's all of us so yeah men and women um and I, I'm, I'm quite interested um in the generation the next generation coming through in their career choices and they're much less interested in kind of strict nine to five black and white this is your job they want to go somewhere where they can be a bit more fluid in their hours they want to be a bit more them they want to dress differently dress up dress down um, and what we wear and how we promote it um, as the RICS and as the industry is important because if young people can be picky about what their jobs are they're so, so it is important that we say, hello, you can come in, you can dress the way that you want to. Um, we're talking about a clothing journey or a way you dress journey. It does change and that's okay. You can, if I started to wear skirts, and I, I never wore skirts before. Um, an issue that I think is important as well is dress down day. And dress down day, I was like, what do I do? Do I dress like me? That's too stressful. Everyone will go, you look different. And they might be trying to be nice, like you look nice or you don't look nice. And, I just wanted to do my job. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of um, I've broken the rules as well as, um, as trying to enhance my career and, and use it, my confidence and what I wear as a, as a weapon to, to success as well. But yeah, dress down day is definitely worth mentioning. I found that really stressful <laughs> before when I didn't know how to dress down as a, as a girl um, amongst many men. If I wear jeans, 
like they're just really fitted and really different and then you can see my curves and feminine and and then I don't do t-shirts because it's not me um to do I wear a dress or outerwear if I just wear like a nice dress and tights something like that for in work and then it kind of looks like I'm dressing up to be honest dress down day for me often meant dressing up because yes. on the weekends or, yeah. or out of work I I'd wear really lovely clothes and fabrics and really nice things fitted things like Chanel inspired jackets that at work I would be much more like yeah really boring building sites um kind of loose fitting trousers shirt high vis <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> so totally get that. the opposite for our industry <laughs> So, um, so Helen, what about some top tips for us then? Yeah, so I was thinking about what I could share that would be uh, most practical and useful for people to actually sort of use and run with. Um, so I've just got three sort of three tips to share with you. Um, one is it, a lot of work that I do with women is around identifying their true style. So we're kind of forgetting what you're doing or where you're going or what your job is it's like who are you like stripping it all back and thinking about you first and it's it's quite a tricky thing to come to for, to do it for yourself but one tip i have that will really help you decide what your style is and then you start with that and make it to the appropriate uh, appropriate to the situation um so one tip is to just think about when you feel at your very best and uh, what sophie just said highlights this beautifully so some women who are generally more classic in their style if, so I'll just reverse a little bit. Think about if you were going to an event and you got the dress code totally wrong, you totally misjust, misjudged the dress code, would you rather have turned up and be overdressed or would you rather turn up and be really underdressed? And those women who would actually rather, if they'd got it wrong, look like they'd made more effort and be smarter, probably I probably Marion would you feel like that because you're quite classic in your style aren't yeah. you? from what you've just said I imagine you feel your best dressed up um, then yeah. you're then you're more classic in your style and that means that wherever you're going whatever you're doing you always want to look like you've made an effort and be smarter so don't try and fit in with the jeans and t-shirts or shorts and t-shirts on the beach type of style try and always make it make yourself look more groomed and make yourself look more smart because then you'll feel more like you and if your comfort zone would actually be that you rocked up and been really casual and effortless and, and got the dress code wrong, but you still would feel like you in that, then your style is much more natural. And then, you know, again, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, you need to be a little bit undone in order to look and feel your very best. So, you know, to the extreme, like if you were going to an interview and you felt like what you should wear is a black suit and a white shirt, then, you know, Think about the fabric of the suit and look for something more fluid or don't wear a shirt with it wear a t-shirt so that again the fabric is more um it is more dressed down don't you know groom your hair to within an inch of its life do a marion and have a little kink <laughs> no be slightly tousled or undone because that's how you're going to look and feel your best slightly undone so you know a smarter occasion slightly undone and a non-smart occasion totally undone because that's your free and easy style so that's tip number one Tip number two, I think I've said this already, but dress for you first. Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, think about who you are first and what makes you feel good and then tweak it to the occasion. You might need to smile it up a little bit or rough it down a little bit or make it more feminine. If your style is more feminine, you feel better in skirts and dresses or if you're more statement dressing and you want to, you know, you like your statement jewellery or your bold colours, bring that into. So dress for yourself first. And then the third thing, which is the hardest thing, is to work out what your, um, your best colours are, how to dress to flatter your body shape. And I think a lot of, for a lot of women, this comes with time and experimentation and watching what other people are doing and you get there. But for a lot of women, and myself included, I didn't learn about my own style till I was um, well, in, well into my 30s. Um, and you know, for a lot of women that I work with, it's even later than that, that we, we finally get to grips with their style. Um, and it, it, once you know the sort of color palette that works for you and how to really flatter your figure in a way that makes you feel confident, whether that's being more, you know, showing off your curves more or disguising them, but still looking good. 
how to accessorize in a way that's right for you. These are the things that will make the difference and that mean that you can follow points one and two. Um, and I do have um, something that I can point you to that's a freebie that I'm really happy for. Shall I talk about that now, Marion? Yeah, sure, yeah. You're happy to give away freebie, I, not saying no. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it's a series of videos, short videos um, that get fed to you over a week. Those with style tips that cover everything from how to identify colors that work for you, to dressing for your body shape, to working out what your signature style is to accessorizing etc it's a really nice little series so if you want that you need to head to helenreynoldsstyle.com and it's there on the home page that you can access it that's super thank you both it's been fascinating uh, talking to you i'm now going to go have a rake through my wardrobe and work <laughs> out what i'm going to work out <laughs> where this afternoon but thank you very much for your time really appreciate it thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.